Autriche, je pas. Oh. Ouais. 300. Non, c'est Parce que c'est très, très beau. 3000. Oh, c'est très, très beau. 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 C'est très, Perfume, the materials, it's just, I consider the, the raw materials, natural or synthetic, just like an odor. That with this odor, we have to imagine to create a perfume, something to, to leave, something we have to give emotion, to make dream. And uh, a perfume is the expression of uh, our idea, we perfumer, the idea, the, uh, the image of a brand, etc. And it's something you have, we have to, to give pleasure, to seduce the woman who wear it. She has to be seduced by her perfume. Because he consider, she considers it's very good for her, like a, a beautiful dress, etc. and so on, and nothing else. Uh, they have to love it, uh, and not consideration of the raw materials, etc. It's really an emotion, uh, it's what we try to, to, to give to the, to the customer of our passion. Joy was created uh, in 1930 about, and uh, it was Jean Petou who asked uh, to Admiras to create for him, for his customer, customer of the Haute Couture house, uh, for the best customer, a perfume, the most expensive as possible, Uh, but a bouquet floral made of um, the two most expensive, expensive raw materials, jasmine and rose. And so he asked Almiras to, 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 to realize his best and he realized Joy. And at first, in the first time, Joy was only uh, given as a gift to the best customer of the haute couture. And after a few years, Uh, it, has, uh, it was a success, a lot of women desire to have this perfume. He decided to, to put it on sale in 1935 about, and uh, with the um, um, advertisement of the costliest perfume in the world, and it was true. Perfumes and rare essences have always been treasured for their preciousness. So are the containers they come in. In fact, antique perfume bottles and their boxes are worth much more than their original price. The perfume bottle is an art form and as important as the fragrance itself. The fashioning of beautiful flacons for scent has motivated the imagination of artists and craftsmen in all civilizations from ancient days right up to the present. Perfumes and their bottles were wedded to fashion starting in the early 1900s. Every couturier had to have a fragrance And this was the start of the designer perfumes we have today. You can have a look uh, of everything I have in my shop for uh, about perfume. This is a perfume bottle of uh, Paul Poiret for Aladdin. Paul Poiret was the first one, very famous in the fashion, um, to have the idea to, to do the perfume bottles 
with uh, with the fashion, with the dresses, and uh, so he he organized a factory and a manufactory for perfume bottles. The name was uh, Perfume of Rosin, very famous in the 1920. And um, he was uh, a very famous creator. So the perfume bottles was sold and um, with, uh, with the dresses and powders also, everything about cosmetics. The, the first shop for perfume bottles for Rosine, for Paul Poiret, the first one. This is the famous Caparelli bust of shocking, and uh, we say that it was made by Leonor Fini. And uh, it's the, um, the bust of May West, the famous player. <laughs> and uh, Schiaparelli was uh, working a lot with famous creators, with Dali and uh, we others. So she she had very nice idea and uh, she was very eccentric. This one it looks like uh, uh, the bust for working with a centimeter, and uh, those flowers are made in glass. This is uh, the famous Successu of Schiaparelli from uh, 1945. Is a shape of a leaf, and uh, is uh, made in in glass with color. You can open it by this way. And uh, this was never used. It was in the window of the shop in Place Vendôme. Okay, it's interesting to, to say then uh, the first one to sell perfume and to do it was uh, people selling gloves. So in the shop, uh, they, saw they sell perfume bottles. That's the reason why Kislav in the 30s did a perfume and the name was six and a half, the size of a glove. This is a piece that uh, uh, this perfume bottles has not, never been sold. It was a gift given to people, journalists and uh, other very famous people uh, in, a, in a big uh, party. Uh, to celebrate the birthday of the uh, Maison de Couture fashion of Yves Saint Laurent. So it was uh, perfume bottles, not sold, but just offered, and it was a limited edition from 1,500 exemplary. This is from uh, Guerlain, the name is Liu. It's from 1929, and it's a very, very nice and rare piece of uh, Yellow, especially in this size, it was a big size, and in a black crystal with a top. And this is typical of uh, Art Deco fashion in the 30s. It's a baccarat, yes, and you have uh, the number without the stopper, and it's crystal in Gala, written in crystal here. I think that the quality is that the flacon must has his own stopper, his own label, and also his box, and if possible, the perfume. You see, that's what I call parfait, perfect. And um, that's for quality. And then after, it's rareté. Rareté, I don't have to explain. It's very easy. It's the one you don't find very easily. And then the third thing, which is as important as the other things, is Côte d'Amour. Côte d'Amour, I don't know, my English is not as good as that. I can't explain, but you see, it's the flacon people love. And they love sometimes the company as Guerlain, as uh, Dior, as uh, Nina Ricci, or as Paul Poiret, which was uh, a very famous, very famous person. And, um, but also it can be not for the company, but only for one flacon. What we call Côte d'Amour, uh, why does it go to Nina Ricci? I think it's go to Nina Ricci because Monsieur Ricci had a wife, Nina, and uh, he was uh, in love with his wife and all his uh, perfume bottles was done for her. It was Lalique, but you see it was with birds, with heart, and very feminine and very, very nice. So. 
uh, even if it's done now, because they still done the one with the birds, they had their Côte d'Amour. That's very important. But yes, evening in Paris is very famous, and I think that we can hear people in front of the window when the door is shut and they say, oh, my mother had that, my grandmother had that. Please, can I smell? I want to smell my grandmother's uh, smell and my perfume and my mother. And I think it's a famous bottle, you see, and the blue color is something people doesn't forget, you see. And uh, I think the way it's evening in Paris, they, they dream about it. And uh, it was a nice dream, but even for French people, because people who came only once went to the Tour Eiffel, bought the bottle from Evening in Paris, and went after in the, the country, and uh, it was a souvenir. Francois Cody revolutionized the perfume industry because he put his perfumes in the finest containers and offered smaller quantities at lower prices in order to make perfume an affordable luxury for everyone. His collaboration with René Lalique, the master glassmaker, completely changed the industry forever. Yesterday's perfume bottles have become valuable collector's antiques, and now so can perfumes, with the establishment of the Osmotech in Versailles, a living museum that commemorates perfumes, some that have since disappeared from the market. There are 750 perfumes in the collection, each made up to the specifications of original formulas. And by appointment, you too can actually smell your great-great-grandmother's perfumes. <laughs>